Welcome to another episode of Healthy You. My name is Elisa Weathers, and today we have Alka Chadna from PETA preparing a creamy, cozy vegetable pot pie. Hi, Elisa. Hi. Tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been? You're vegan, right? Uh, yes, I am, Elisa. Um, I've been vegan since 1989. I'm a lifelong vegetarian. I was raised vegetarian. Okay. Um, but in 1989, I had, uh, well, I'd visited a slaughterhouse uh, and was aware of uh, the proliferation of factory farms. Um, and uh, I just knew that I didn't want to contribute to that cruelty. So I kind of went cold turkey, uh, went vegan, uh, and I've been that way for the past many years. Awesome. So you obviously cook a lot of vegan food. Mm -hmm. What would you say to somebody who is interested in uh, taking on a vegan lifestyle? It's easy. Uh, you know, there are so many resources these days there uh, are. that people can check out online, mm -hmm. free recipes. Um, certainly check out PETA.org. We have thousands okay. of recipes. They're all kitchen tested. And we try to make things really accessible. Um, you know, people have um, misconceptions right. about eating vegan. You know, they worry that it's going to be expensive, and it's not. It's actually really a lot cheaper to eat vegan food. And you know, uh, you know, vegetables can, especially off season, be a bit more pricey. But people should keep in mind. That's true. Yeah. yeah people should keep in mind that. Um, you know, there are options with frozen vegetables, canned mm -hmm. vegetables, you know, in the winter months, you can go to those. Uh, and in any case, um, uh, what we know is that all of the health guidelines tell us that we're supposed to be eating minimum five servings of vegetables a day. Right. So the consumption of vegetables is important for everybody, you know, whether they're vegan, vegetarian, omnivore, you know, everybody has to be eating vegetables. Absolutely. Yeah, but, but then there are a lot of very inexpensive foods that certainly make up the um, center of my plate. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm talking about lentils, beans, mm -hmm. grains, rice, quinoa, you know, which are very inexpensive and accessible. Um, you know, I don't spend my life in the kitchen. I work full time. Uh, and, and yet it's very easy if you just have a couple of tricks up your sleeve to, uh, to create healthy foods that are delicious and nutritious and uh, yummy. Well, I am super excited. Okay, great. <laughs> and uh, so today we have a vegetable pot pie. Just in time for winter, this delicious veggie packed piping hot pot pie with a biscuit topping is the quintessential comfort food. We're gonna use an assortment of vegetables to increase the visual appeal and the phytochemical nutrient punch. Uh, now potatoes, peas and carrots are standard in a pot pie but you can add parsnips, celery, green beans, Brussels sprouts, and whatever else you like. Uh, for additional texture, you can add a vegan chicken. I like seitan, which is also called wheat meat, but you could also go old school with something like tofu or tempeh, or new school with something like Gardein's chicken scallopini, uh, Beyond Grilled Chicken Strips, or some other cholesterol-free, cruelty-free vegan substitute. I love all the options. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so let's get started. Yeah, let's. So we've got our pot over here, and you very nicely uh, turned on the heat. So we're going to be cooking at um, medium high temperature. Okay. And I'll just uh, go through what we're going to do first, and then we'll do it. All right. <laughs> uh, so we've got our uh, pot, and when it's nice and hot, we're going to add some olive oil, two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. Okay. Then we're going to add onions and garlic. Um, oh, I love starting any dish with oh, totally. oil, onions, <laughs> and garlic. <laughs> it makes the house so fragrant. Yes. And like, <laughs> um, so we're going to add those and then uh, saute them until they become uh, translucent. Okay. Uh, so that's about five minutes. Uh, then we're going to add our vegan chicken. And this is uh, the Gardein product that we're using today. It's chicken scallopini. Okay. Um, and as I said in the intro, people can use tofu instead or tempeh or any other product or just skip it entirely and just have a vegetable pot pie without the faux chicken. Did this chicken, uh, faux chicken, excuse me, come pre-seasoned or did you season it ahead of time? It comes pre-seasoned. Okay. Um, but even if it hadn't been seasoned, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you just have a plain uh, seitan, for example, which is wheat meat, mm -hmm. um, you don't need to season it ahead of time because okay. 
there's going to be a lot of seasoning right. in here, and, uh, so we're going to be <laughs> not just lacking fine. in flavor. No, not at all. <laughs> uh, so after we do the oil, the onions, the garlic, uh, then we're going to brown the uh, the vegan chicken in here. Okay. Um, then we're going to add our vegetables, and today we've got potatoes, parsnips, celery, and carrots. Uh, that we're going to start with, and then we're going to saute those until they become soft. Okay. You know, sort of uh, tender crisp, as they say. You Sounds know, before it goes through it, but it doesn't have to be super soft. Um, then we add our seasonings, um, and then we're going to uh, make a gravy in here on top. But I, I feel that the pot is nice and hot, so I think we can get started. Okay. Uh, and we'll go ahead and put our oil in. So this is just two tablespoons of olive oil, which actually Elisa measured out. <laughs> uh, so yay, Elisa, good job. <laughs> Um, and now we go ahead and put in our put in our onions. And this is about a uh, quarter cup. Well, this is one onion. It's a medium sized onion. Okay. So that's sizzling. You can even hear it, which is nice. Now we're going to go to the garlic. Okay. Um, and I've got my garlic press right here. Easy peasy. And uh, you know the recipe calls for one garlic, but these are kind of small cloves. One okay. clove. So I'm, I've got two cloves here. And All again, right. you know, if you're not crazy about garlic, leave it out. Um, but if you like a lot of garlic, add more. Okay, as you can see, this is sauteing really nicely. And, um, you know, uh, in the real world, we would probably continue to let this saute for a couple of more minutes just to kind of let the onions begin to caramelize ever so slightly. Uh -huh. It just adds another layer of flavor, which is quite lovely. Um, but I think, you know, because we do want to um, get this done in a reasonable amount of time um, sure. for the show, we'll go ahead and go to the next step, which is All to right. add our vegan chicken. Again, this is the Gardein product. Okay. Um, but you can use whatever you like or not use anything at all. Yeah, and vegetables there, are always I, good. That's me um, just dumping it in. <laughs> not particularly artful, but there you go. <laughs> and now all we're doing here is just browning it. We're just gonna, um, you know, Stir it around. And you cut these kind of the same uh, size as the onion, right? Yeah. Just nice bite-sized pieces. Right, okay. precisely. And uh, there you can see it just getting brown. And you know, again, in real life, we would do this for a couple of minutes. Um, it's a pretty quick dish. Uh, and there, that looks good enough for now. Oh, smells so oh, amazing. Good. Yay, and we'll let this cook while I go over here. Um, and I've already chopped up the potatoes. These are three potatoes. You can use whatever type of potato you okay, like. Okay, I was going to ask. Yeah. yeah. So these are just regular... Uh, um, they're red potatoes. Red and potatoes, okay. I went ahead and peeled them, um, you know, but, but if you like the skin of a potato, yeah, and of course that's okay. where a lot of the nutrients are, leave the skin on and you just have to be sure to scrub it, you yes. know, really well. Yep, okay, um, I hear you. I was in a hurry this morning, so I just uh, <laughs> peeled them. Uh, so we've got three potatoes, we have two carrots, which I've already peeled and chopped. Okay. Uh, we have two celery sticks that I've um, uh, chopped up here. And then we have parsnips. Uh, a lot of people aren't familiar with parsnips. Uh, it's just a different root vegetable. Okay. Um, and it has a, it's a, got a great nutrient profile with a lot of really good vitamins. Um, and you peeled them also? Yes, okay. these have been peeled. And they look like carrots, but white. Okay. Um, and so now I'm just, you know, kind of chopping them up. And, you know, you don't have to make them super fancy. In fact, if you kind of make the chopping rustic, it's, I think, a little bit more mm -hmm. uh, authentic. Okay. <laughs> uh, there you go. Um, oh, that's the so good. part of the, oh good, I'm glad. Um, so here's a, the other bit of parsnip. So we've got two parsnips here. Um, and I'll just say, um, you know, people, uh, I think, are becoming more familiar with this whole concept of uh, eating different colors. Uh -huh. uh, and, you know, the, the scientists tell us that the different colors in vegetables represent uh, different phytochemicals. And those are just micronutrients okay. that have cancer fighting properties. Really? Um, and so, you know, you think about a red tomato or a yellow tomato, those are going to have different phytochemicals, different cancer fighting Interesting. nutrients. Oh, yeah. Thank you for sharing uh, that. Sure. Um, I think, you know, now th these days when you go to a farmer's market or a grocery store, you'll see not only the orange carrots that we all grew up with, mm -hmm. but you'll see purple carrots, yellow carrots, yes. um, and even white carrots. beautiful on a plate. <laughs> totally gorgeous, and gorgeous in a pot pie. Oh. 
And the bonus is, I mean, not only is it visually stunning, but it's also uh, got more, you know, punch yeah. for cancer fighting. Okay. Uh, with cancer fighting phytochemicals. So, um, you know, you know. can think about that too when you're uh, deci deciding what kind of vegetables you want in your pot pie. I'm using conventional potatoes, but you can use sweet potatoes. Okay. Um, you could put butternut squash in here if that's your jam, as the young <laughs> people say. Um, let's see. And I'm going to go ahead and take this and just pour all it all right. in. So there we go. Um, yeah, pour that. Oh, go. oh, or you can do it. Look at you. <laughs> Multitasking. Yay. Awesome. Thank you, Elisa. Okay. Uh, so we're just going to stir this now. Now, at this point, um, let's remind ourselves we've got the onions, the garlic, the vegan chicken, uh, and now we also have put in all the vegetables, um, in our case, potatoes, carrots, uh, parsnips, and, and celery. celery. <laughs> yeah, <woo -hoo. laughs> Elisa for the win. Um, so, uh, in real life, we would go ahead and continue sauteing this for about eight minutes. Okay, you know, that's not five, too long. Five, six minutes. Mm -hmm. No, it's easy. And, you know, you can go and, uh, um, you know, do jumping jacks. <laughs> Since this is healthy, you, I think I have to be uh, Get your mini that. workout in <laughs> yeah, for the yeah, day. <laughs> exactly. Uh, do a couple of knee lifts, walk in place, you know, do whatever you want. But, you know, and, and then come back and do, do your arm exercise here with stirring the pot. Um, but, uh, what you're aiming for, of course, is for the vegetables to get uh, tender crisp. So you could take a, a fork and pierce the potato mm -hmm. uh, and it would go in, but it wouldn't crumble apart. That's because it's still going to go in. There's another portion later exactly. on where it's going to continue to heat. So we don't want to overcook it in Precisely. on the stove. Yep. Okay. And, you know, uh, normally that would be about um, eight minutes. Um, oh, actually, we also have to put in the spices now. And we've okay. already talked about that. We said that we're, ha we're having, um, well, our bay leaf, okay. which goes in, and that's just to impart a flavor. Um, and here we have our poultry seasoning and our salt. Uh, there are two teaspoons of poultry seasoning okay. and one teaspoon, one teaspoon of salt. Any um, kind of salt? Um, I've used regular sea salt, just okay. this type that you get at the normal grocery store. I mean, you know, you could get fancy and use your pink Himalayan salt, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's really nice. And it probably has, you know, an additional dimension of flavor, you know, another layer yeah. of flavor, which is kind of nice. So with any, with any, sorry, <laughs> uh, with any gravy, um, we always have a flour to thicken it. Now I'm using just regular all-purpose flour. Okay right here. This is a quarter cup of flour. And so we just take this uh, flour and we sprinkle it on top of the vegetables like so. And then we're going to cook this for, you know, about two minutes. And the idea there is just that you're uh, uh, heating up and cooking the flour so that you don't have raw flour okay. in your pot. Yeah. But, you know, so you just stir it around and the flour essentially coats all the vegetables and the faux chicken. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to take a little shortcut today um, and it's two cups of broth that we want. Uh, so we just have some water here, two cups of water, and we're just using a vegetable balloon Perfect. cube. Yeah, yes. super easy. So I'm just going to uh, go ahead and... And you're um, just going to put them both in here at once, yes. right? Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and put the vegetable cube in here, but you don't even have to mix it up particularly. Yeah, and sometimes people think, you know, you have to have the broth, you have to make, make it separately, but you really don't have to because it's going all in the same pot anyway. Exactly. So. Yeah, and you know, some people will worry that you have to, um, you know, get all of this mixed mm -hmm. in here, but the heat is going to help it break it down, so we can just put the whole thing I'll in here. I'll take any shortcut you give me. Oh, yeah, <laughs> same here. You know, this is, um, these are the sorts of things that we do to, to allow us to cook healthfully for our families um, and, yeah, you know, have time have to be complicated. as well. Yeah, you don't want to live in the kitchen. <laughs> um, so now we just stir this around, and, you know, now it just looks like you've got flour and water. <laughs> with your but you can see, you can see it, um, the cube, you know, dissolving. Yeah, it dissolves pretty quickly, and then it becomes a really gorgeous color. Um, but if you just allow this to continue cooking, it's going to thicken as well. Mm -hmm. It gets thick, it gets a little bit darker, it's really pretty. Um, and at that point... And you need to continuously stir this? Um, you know, or? you don't have to. Okay. No, you can, you know, throw in your five jumping jacks and stir okay. a little bit. Five <laughs> jumping jacks and, yeah. Um, you do have to do the jumping jacks. I mean, this is actually a pretty low-fat recipe. <laughs> then the last uh, step here um, is that we put on our peas. And this is a cup of peas. These are frozen peas. Okay. Um, but, you know, there is a... 
Th there's no... Um, there's no shame in frozen. There's no shame in frozen. Um, sometimes <laughs> some companies will um, freeze it as soon as they pick it. So it yes. can almost be, I mean, I don't know how you would know, but it can be you know, more nutrient packed than exactly. if you were to pick it up from the produce section. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I believe that's true. Okay, so there we have our Beautiful. vegetables and gravy. And the next step is going to be to make the pot pie cover. All right. Welcome back to Healthy You. I'm Elisa Weathers, your host for today. We are cooking with Alka Chadna, and uh, right now we're making the filling for our vegetable pot pie. And right now we have uh, the gravy, the vegetables, the faux chicken, all on the stove heating up. And uh, now we're gonna make the cover or the dough for the top of the, the pot pie. Yeah. So, um, so that's the next step. Yes, indeed. And, um, you know, other shortcuts. There are a lot of uh, doughs that you can get at the supermarket okay. already prepared. Um, you know, something that a lot of pita, pita folks know and vegans know <laughs> is yeah. that, um, you know, some of the Pillsbury doughs that you can get, uh -huh. they're actually vegan. Oh, I mean, they're kind okay. of chock full of chemicals. So it's like better yeah. living through chemistry. <laughs> but, um, you know, but they're but there. if you're so in a if pinch. You, exactly. If you're in a pinch, you can always use those. And then you don't have to do all this. And you know, sometimes people make really fussy pie covers, like you think about a, a flaky pie crust, mm -hmm. um, and that's great. And it's really not hard, but you know, it can be challenging because you have to, you know, cut in the fat. I use Earth Balance when I'm making a pie okay. uh, crust. Um, you have to cut in the fat, and then you have to have very cold water, yeah. and you have to mix it just so. Um, and so to avoid all of that fussiness, uh -huh. I really like using this biscuit recipe. Okay. Um, and it's super easy. Uh, so we're going to do that now. We've already measured out two cups, again, of all-purpose flour, but you can use your healthy whole wheat flour. <laughs> <laughs> or if people are trying to go gluten-free, um, right. you know, you can use a different flour that doesn't have gluten in it. Okay. Um, what we're going to have as our dry ingredients uh, what to add to the flour, I, we've already measured out two-thirds uh, teaspoon of baking soda, two-thirds teaspoon of baking powder, okay. and a teaspoon of salt. We're going to add that in here. So, you know, uh, I mean, some people are really good about this sort of thing. They'll use a sifter or whatever, you know, to get this in nicely. Uh, but I figured this is my opportunity for a little bit of an arm exercise. So <laughs> I'm just going to, you know, use my wire whisk to whisk really nicely to make sure that you don't have any, whoops a daisy. Um, <laughs> um, mix really nicely to make sure that you don't have any, you know, clumps of baking soda that don't get mixed in nicely or okay. clumps of baking powder. Yeah, you want to mix be, it yeah. really, really well. Yeah, exactly. So, But there. like you said, if you don't have a sifter at home, that's, it's, yeah. it's fine. And um, I don't. Oh, I, I'm making a mess. <laughs> that's okay. I that's what it. the kitchen's for. There, yeah, right. <laughs> that's what husbands are for. They can come in and yeah. clean up afterward. <laughs> Um, so we've got our flour, our baking soda, our baking powder, and our salt. And here, you just want to flavor it a little bit. Uh -huh. You can use whatever you want. Okay. You know, you could use a really nice garlic powder or garlic salt. Okay. Um, here I've got thyme. Uh, you know, a chef friend of mine showed me this trick uh, some years ago, and I've done it ever since. And you know, she might have been um, pulling my leg, I don't know. <laughs> but she said you should pinch these herbs, these dried herbs, when you put them into a recipe oh. Oh. because that unlocks the flavor. Um, that makes just, a lot of sense. Yeah, like I think the heat of your hand and, you know, you're releasing the oils yeah. when you do this. And so I do that. Um, and that's great. Oops, a daisy. You know, okay, so we've done that. So okay. now we've got the dry ingredients here. What I meant to do before was we've got um, a cup of soy milk here. Okay. Uh, and this is a tablespoon of lemon juice. And um, you, could you use almond milk or cashew yes, milk or whatever you, you have at the house? Thank you for pointing that okay. out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, any type of milk is great. Okay. Um, and that's lemon juice. I'm yep, sorry for interrupting yep. Oh, no, you. that's great. And so you've put the lemon juice into the uh, soy milk or other plant-based milk, as, a, as you said, almond milk, cashew milk, whichever you like, hemp milk. Um, and the idea here is that you're making a vegan buttermilk. Um, oh, okay. And I'm going to take the wire whisk out now and put it over here. Um, and we've got our wet ingredients that we're going to put into this bowl. Uh, we've got our vegan buttermilk. Remember, one cup of in my case, soy milk uh, with a tablespoon of lemon juice. And is it okay to just do it um, just on the spot there? Or yep. does it help 
to sit in in the milk for a yeah, while. Yeah, I should have sat. For, you know, I should have done it before. And that's fine. I, you yeah, know, but yeah. this is fine. I'm yeah, sure it'll, it'll be delicious. Be, yeah. <laughs> well, it'll be I'm just, just fine. I'm just gonna stir this here. For yeah, you. I'm not really into that whole fussy. Uh, school of cooking, you know, like the Julia Child, you know, do this exactly like this. Yeah, um, me neither. No thanks. <laughs> uh, and now we've got, um, this is a quarter cup of olive oil okay. that we're putting in. Um, and could this also be substituted with uh, coconut oil or something? Oh yeah, like totally. Okay. You know, uh, canola oil would be fine too. Okay. Uh, anything. Um, but there, you just want some fat in there. And you just mix it. Now you mix it um, in a way that you don't, you don't want to like mix it like yeah. that, but okay. just you just want the wet to get in with the dry so that you don't have any dry errant flour in here. Okay. Um, so that's pretty quick. And there you go. And the wooden spoon you're using is perfect because it's stiff enough to uh, yeah. to control the dough. You know, if you have something flimsy like maybe a, a plastic spatula, right? Yeah, this is good. And, and this is it. That's it. We're done. Beautiful. Uh, so this is our going to be our pot pie cover. Okay. And what we do is we just spoon it on top of the, um, the, the filling and gravy and we put it into the oven. Okay. So um, have we turned the stove off? Let's turn it no. off now. Awesome. Good job. Thank you, Elisa. Good All job. All right. Uh, you know, and now like some fancy chefs, they would take this, you know, cover and they might use... Um, like heart shape cookie cutters <laughs> and put hearts over here. So oh, if you want to do something really fancy, yeah. you can do that. <laughs> I've never done that. <laughs> yeah, this is a, oops, a daisy. There, I caught it. Um, but this is what you do. I, I just like spoon it on top. Okay. And spoon it on top. Easy peasy. Yeah, easy peasy. And it goes in the oven. Okay, almost done. But this biscuit topping is just awesome. I um, really like it. So we're going to take a quick break and watch a public service announcement from PETA. During the break, we're going to transfer this into a baking dish, and, uh, and then we'll put it in the oven and eat it very, very soon. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Go ahead, ready? I'm Forrest Whitaker for People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, and this is my daughter, True. Hi. Life is full of choices. And many years ago, I chose to become a vegetarian. And it's one of the best choices I've ever made. And since True's dad was a vegetarian, she decided to be a vegetarian too. You may decide to go vegetarian for better health, for a better environment, or you can be like True and I and just decide you don't want to eat meat anymore. I love animals and I love being a vegetarian. I'm Forrest Whitaker. And I'm True Whitaker. And I'm we're vegetarian. And, and we're, we're vegetarians. vegetarians. Welcome back to Healthy You. We are here with Alka Chadna and we're making a warm, cozy vegetable pot pie. And uh, so, like we said earlier, Alka works at PETA. Um, if somebody wants to get involved with the PETA organization, how can they do that? Uh, it's really easy. Uh, they can go to, uh, on the web, PETA.org. PETA.org, okay. Uh, and uh, PETA's mission is, um, or mission statement, is animals are not ours to eat, mm -hmm. wear, experiment on, use in entertainment, or exploit in any other way. Okay. And so we have campaigns that are focused in all of these different areas. Uh, and so whether your interest is in uh, ensuring that people don't wear fur, or that uh, animals aren't used in cosmetics testing, or that uh, animals um, should not be killed for food, uh, there's something there for you. There's something for everybody. You can learn about all of the issues. There are fact sheets. Um, awesome. And then there are missions so that people, you know, if you want to put an end to the cruelty that exists in all of these different spheres, uh, you can very easily sign action alerts, uh, join our uh, activist network, and that way you can get the information about what's happening, our latest investigations, um, uh, the latest news, the victories, there are a lot of victories. Uh, so it's very, a very exciting time to be involved. Uh, for people who are in the DMV area, mm -hmm. DC, Maryland, Virginia, uh, PETA has an office in uh, Washington, DC. Okay. Uh, it's in um, the DuPont neighborhood. Uh, and every month we have a volunteer work party uh, where we always have food and beverages, wine and beer and other beverages. Uh, and there's generally a speaker. We give updates on what's going on at PETA, okay. how people get, get involved. And it's a really fun time. You know, the community comes together. You know, we stuff envelopes, we joke, we laugh, and uh, eat and drink. So, so is there one this month? 
Uh, yes, uh, it's always uh, the second Wednesday of every month. We're back on Healthy You, and we are ready to eat our vegetable pot pie we've been making with Alka Chadna here from PETA. Thank you so much for this delicious recipe. I can't wait to try it. Thank you so much, Elisa. This is wonderful. And thank you for sharing all of the information that, uh, that you gave us about PETA and how somebody can get involved if they'd like to. Um, so are you ready to dig in? Sure am. All right. <laughs> you hand me that plate, please? Yes. Great. And we're just going to spoon it out. I guess, uh, you know, when you think pie, you might think you need to cut it like a pie, but um, this is very easy to just grab a spoon and plop it on your plate like so. Yep. And I can help you here. With, uh, <laughs> there you go. Get some good. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Yeah, there you go. Oh, nice. Wow, a lot of party <laughs> serving. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> you said you like comfort food. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a volume eater. <laughs> All right, and okay, now great. a plate for me. Yeah, great. Oh, yay. All right. Oh, it does Is that yummy. okay? All yeah, right. Thank you. All right. <laughs> okay, here we go. Take <laughs> Your health, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> mm. Oh. The bite Thumbs I took up. was a little big. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Mm. So warm. Perfect for the winter time. Thank you again, Alka, for this delicious recipe. Thank you, uh, Lisa. Tell us again how we can look up information for PETA. Sure. Um, people can go to the web. PETA.org is our website. And you can check us out there. And if people live in the DMV area, uh, certainly come and see us in DC uh, for our volunteer work parties. And you can get all that information on PETA's, uh, PETA DC's Facebook page. Awesome. For more recipes from Healthy You, you can go to HealthyYouTVShow.com and you can also find us on Facebook and YouTube. Look up Healthy You TV Show. That's all we have for today, folks. And uh, we're just going to eat the rest of this food and uh, we'll see you next time.